Chenault, and it's the Tom Chenault Radio Show. I hope you're having an unbelievable day. I am, and what a... It's just been a great run of the cards on the radio here the last few weeks. Uh, today, we've got a show that is going to absolutely blow your socks off. I know you like Jessie Lee Ward. I know she really, really made you laugh. I know you loved her energy, and that is great. But today, we are really, really, really stepping it up. We are going up the ladder. We've got Fraser Brooks, second-generation network marketer. What the heck does that mean? That means his dad is an unbelievable network marketer, too. We'll ask his mom. Uh, I've seen so many pictures of him and his father. And this guy just is absolutely just idolizes his dad. And it's so refreshing to see that. He lives over there in the UK. He uh, went to his first meeting in 1987 in the womb of his mother. He went on to see his parents earn eight figures from the industry. In 2010, he decided to build his career as a distributor. And in five years, was had over 300,000 people in his organization. And then he decided to step out off the ledge and become a be a circuit trainer to network marketers. And so I'm talking to Eric Warre and Eric just said, listen, there's only a couple of names out there that I think are absolutely at the top of their game that you can trust, that you can believe in, that won't steal your list, that will play it as big as you want to play it, that have content that is over the top. And one of those guys is Fraser Brooks. And I said, who is he? He goes, he lives in England. And I said, well, how can I call him? I don't have long distance on my phone. So he said, you're going to have to figure that out, Tom. So I called him on Facebook. It was just miraculous. Didn't cost me any money. It was unbelievable. And he agreed to come on the show. This guy is funny. He is out of control. Great. He's speaking at GoPro here on December 3rd. We're going to get more into that in a minute. And for my money, I'll take this guy over these two guys any day of the week. I'll take him over Richard Branson, a fellow guy from that country, and Tony Robbins. That's how big I like this guy because I think that what he's got can impact your business at that level. He's unlearned from him. I hope you have a pen. I hope you have a, pe a piece of paper. Frazier, how are you, my friend? Good to talk to you. Oh, man, I am. Um, I was good, and but now I'm on fire after that that was something special I, I appreciate you but yeah life is good over here i'm over in the future uh here in the uk i'm a few hours ahead of you and today is being a great day uh and it's gonna be awesome for you guys too <laughs> well that's cool for so tell me who you are what you do what is different between everybody else and what the Ninja Networker is doing out there. Why are you setting the pace for social media training? Why are you making a difference out there at the level that you're doing with thousands of people on your Facebook Lives and your trainings? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate you having me on. I've heard so much about these awesome shows, and I'm grateful for it and blessed beyond belief. So, yeah, my story kind of is a little bit different to most people's because – the industry of network marketing is a young one. If we compare it to, to a lot of different industries out there, it's super, super young. So there's not that many generations, um, uh, you know, inside the industry. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be one of the very, 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 very few um, who have been around parents who have had almighty success. Um, and because of that, I got involved in personal development at the age of about five years old. I remember listening to a cassette tape of Earl Nightingale. Um, when I was super young and I wanted my dad to turn this, the cassette tape off because it was so boring. I thought it was so boring. Um, my dad said, no, nope, not turning it off. All I'm going to do is take it out, turn it over and listen to side B for more of Earl Nightingale. Um, and it just used to drive me crazy, but I kept listening and listening and listening and listening. And I swear that but if I look back at back in those days, I'm pretty much sure, pretty certain that I learned a thing or two from those cassette tapes, the power of positivity, the power of positive, positive mindset and all that different sort of stuff. So um, after traveling around the world with my parents, I decided that in 2010, instead of being a construction manager, which what I studied to become, wearing a hard hat and wearing you know safety boots was not going to be what I wanted from life. So I decided that I'd be a distributor. And although I had great success and I enjoyed every minute of it, I loved the transformation I got myself and helped other people and travel. I just felt that I was destined for bigger things in the industry. 
an industry that had given me so much, I felt like I had to sacrifice a little bit of my selfishness um, for the greater good of the, of the industry and, and worldwide transformation. So decided to get into coaching um, and that was a brave decision to make, but I've always learned in order to be brave, you have to first be scared because you have to have the courage to make that decision. And it was probably the bravest thing that I've ever done, but the most the most grateful thing that I've, I've, I've ever done. And we created something called the Ninja Networker, which is is uh, is actually responsible for the the biggest amount of training on the largest scale for network marketers outside of Europe. Um, so in our community, we have distributors from over over eighty countries, over three hundred and twenty companies. Uh, we teach, we train, but we we're elevating the professionalism in network marketing done online. The reason for that is there's too many people out there doing it incorrectly, which is making the industry look bad and people not wanting to do it because they don't want to have to spam their family and friends and, and have to convince them to join. So we're doing our bit like you are, Tom, to change this and to elevate the profession, to make it bring the sexy back. Um, so, yeah, that's that's in a real, real basic nutshell. That's what we're all about. Bring it, and he's wild. I mean, this guy is doing it in the middle of the night. He's doing it all the time. And what you want to do is understand how good he is. And all you got to do is friend him up on Facebook, or you got to get into his inner circles. But this is a guy that merits your eyeballs. He's that good, and I believe in him. And I, I, I actually spent five hundred bucks and bought one of his courses. And I'm telling you, he's magic. And the reason he's magic because he breathes this business. This isn't his job. This isn't his passion. It's his obsession. And he, there's no going back for him. You know, the big worry of, with all everybody is, well, what if he goes back into a company? He's just like Eric. He's just like Ray. He's not going anywhere except better and better for you and better for me and better at making us all better at what we do. And that's the most important part. Tell me about your dad and your mom a little bit and the way that they taught you this business a little bit. Would you mind doing that, Frazier? Yeah, for sure. So it's uh, they're actually behind me in one of our many family photos. Uh, I was I was someone who um, I have it's me and my brother. So my brother's two and a half years younger than me. I was March twenty eighth. He was September twenty eighth. Uh, so we're two and a half years years apart, and he was always the confident one. He was always the one one who was the loudest at parties. He was always the one who got all the attention, and I was. I was the introverted, shy guy who had low confidence, no self-esteem, just no passion, no purpose, no mission, no values, no nothing. I was just a float. I was just floating by. And my parents always said, Corbin, who's is my brother's name's Corbin, um, he, he'll be the one who does network marketing. Fraser will probably not do network marketing. And because of those, although I was learning by just watching them do so stuff, I was I was learning from their actions. I, it was distilled into my mind that you know what Fraser you are never going to do what your dad and mum does because you're not crazy enough you're not wild enough you're not you know you're not eccentric enough you're not you're not one of those people um and I I, I believe that until I was 22 years old and I made the decision to do it um and my, my parents the one thing and I have to be very very careful when I talk about this Tom because when I talk about my dad um, he's the only person, and I, he, it's bad to say it with my mum and my fiance are listening, but my dad's the only person who I talk about, and it he, it makes me emotional um, talk, talking about him because what that guy's had to sacrifice at the time when I saw him build his business, when I was thinking he's just being selfish, wanting to build his business for him and not wanting to spend time with, with me and my brother who were young and my, even my mum, and to see now, knowing what he had to do, what he had to sacrifice, who he had to become to serve other people, the, 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 it's hard, the value of seeing his work ethic and what sort of work ethic you have to put into a passion that you've got in order to get a massive success for other people to see and to inspire other people has been, um, I would say, revolutionary for me. Uh, well, and I'm so grateful for the sacrifice he made and the person that he became. I'll never forget Courtney. There's in Courtney, my three-year-old looks at me and says, Daddy, what's, what's wrong with our car? And I go, I don't know what's wrong with it, Court. 
And they go, they're taking it away. And I looked out the window and it was the repo guy and they were taking the car. And it was such an embarrassing, you know, to a three-year-old, I go, oh, I didn't like that car. We're getting a better car. So that car was gone. And I went and bought a 1973 crusty old 2002 BMW. And I restored that car throughout the kid's life. It's still sitting out in front of this building just to remind me of where I came from. But the greatest gift your parents ever gave you was letting you see them struggle. Most parents could disappear in the morning. And come back at night all tired with hopefully a wheelbarrow full of money. Your kids saw that. My kids saw the phones disconnected, the electricity turned off, cars repossessed. I mean, they saw it all. And as a result of that, they understand hard work and they understand the value of a buck at a level you can't believe. And that happened to you, right, Frazier? Oh, you've just, you've just completely smashed it. You just absolutely nailed it. That is everything, Tom. Absolutely everything. And for me, it's just, it was the most valuable lesson that didn't cost me anything. I know. Um, but that was, that was the lesson. Of, it cost them a few. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was, it was, and that's why I believe the value of mentorship is so important. Now you can learn stuff in books and you can see things at events, but you know, having that mentor, whether you know it's just important and it's it's even more important to have a protege as well, someone you pass your legacy on to. So, so grateful for them, Tom. I, I can't even, words don't even, you know, they can't even do just justice, what they mean to me. And Pamela, write that down. It's super important mm-hmm. to have a mentor. But it's even more awesome to have protégés that are taking your message and spreading it. And that's what you're living your life for, right, Frazier? Yeah, for sure. I one of my goal one of my goals is to be grayer than Zig Ziglar and Jim Rome were when they did their last talk. And me to be able to show a video when I was in my twenties and said, Look, guys, I'm still doing today what I was doing back when I was 20, 20 odd, you know, uh, 50, 60 years ago. That's one of my goals because I know my message will live on for many years after that. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine having a business plan like, you know, he's 12. He just said 1987. So he's the same age as uh, Courtney. He's much, much younger than even Adrian. And this snot-nosed kid not only built a huge career in network marketing, then he stepped off the, I'm going to train this profession. I'm going to do that, not in memory of my dad, because my dad's still alive and my mom's still alive, but I'm going to do that out of respect for them and what they freely gave to me. We're coming back right after this. This is the Tom Chenault Show. And we are back. Guess what? Frazier is speaking. And so, Frazier... There are no commercials here, so you, I know you need to go to the bathroom or wipe your forehead or whatever it is, and I have no pity for you because look at this. I am telling you what. <laughs> here's the deal. I don't know if you have Boston Markets over there in uh, in the U.K., but it's kind of a rotisserie chicken place, and you go in there, and you see all the rotisserie chickens on that spit, and they're spinning around, and they're just cooking, and they're all sweaty and stuff like that going in a circle, and that's what Marianne has me in right now. I look like a rotisserie chicken. She's got lights all over me. So don't think I'm all sweaty because my forehead, she didn't even give me any of that stuff to make my forehead not sweat. So I know how I look and I just can't help it. That's just the way I am. And I want you to feel sorry for me. Let's let's talk about you going to GoPro. I, I, what? What are you going to say? Yeah, for sure. No, I, I just... I just... I, I saw I saw a video I saw a video of you uh, on Facebook like I think it was dated back about two or three years ago and man you are looking good <laughs> look at my you're face doing the this. right stuff man I almost didn't put this picture up because yeah. I looked so bad but you know when I got this picture I thought I looked so good I swear I was sucking my face in <laughs> and I thought I looked great but you never know because I love myself just the way I look I have never been all a Twitter about you know and I always make got mad at people that just said you know oh, Tom, you need to lose weight. You need to do this. You need to do that. And I go, really? Why don't you tell me, you know, tell me how great your life is. My life's pretty great. So shut up. You know, because I was so defensive about it. And <laughs> like I would divert the attention. But this picture is like unbelievable. So I got to figure out a way to crop out me and keep Tony. But I don't even know how to do it. Or maybe maybe Marianne could just like photo stretch it or something. But anyway, we don't care about that. I am telling you guys what I do care about. Obviously, last year or the year before, whenever this was taken, uh, 
Richard Branson was with Denise, and Tony Robbins was speaking there. This year, they've got Magic Johnson. They've got Pitbull. They've got Bob Proctor. They've got some John Maxwell. They've got some crazy good speakers, but they've also got Frazier Brooks. And I am telling you, for my money, that's the ticket I'm buying. That's why I'm going. And uh, I think I have some tickets left. So, Marianne, come on in here. I think the tickets are like $547 a piece if you go onto the GoPro website. And uh, – do we have any left before I even get myself in the trap here? You know what, Sit down. We got a few, so if you guys are looking to go, you got to get on there. Okay, well, well you hear me? yeah, you're here. So you look beautiful. How are you? Do I have to turn you up or anything? Yeah, you might need to. So this is my mother, everybody. It's Marianne Niehaus, <laughs> and I love her with all of my heart, and she is like everything to me. So she knows. I think we have some GoCo Pro tickets. If you, if you text us, how would they do that? They can text me, 303. No, here. No, no. Let's just do it. What do you want to do? I love Eric. If you text I love Eric. Oh, good, good. That's a great idea. uh, In the comments, just I love GoPro, not Eric, because Eric (laughs) would get all shy. I love GoPro. We'll give you (laughs) tickets at our cost. We we paid, what? How much did we pay for them? Like, I don't know, $700 a piece? No, we didn't. What did we pay for them? I bought 100. Five. No, they cost five. Oh, we're giving, we're selling them for 370, though. Okay, so we're giving a discount. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's yeah, about yeah. there's not many left. If you want to go here, Frazier, if you want to go to GoPro, get hold of Marianne on Facebook. Just send her a private message or send me a private message. Do something. I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> In fact, Marianne, I'll put up a link before it's over. We'll give you. I'll put a link up. Yeah. So you can go. But you're are you are, how excited are you, Frazier, about going to GoPro? Ah, uh, Tom. Like, I, I'm gonna. Sh- I'll share a story. Right. I like sharing stories and I hope you got I hope you guys the guys okay, listening Frazier, can understand. Frazier, the- I don't want to do that. I wanna I wanna come back from this break right now and then you're gonna tell a story. All right, I gotta go. All right, we are back. It is Tom Chenault and it's the Tom Chenault show. Hopefully you're having an unbelievable day. I hope you love that commercial. And here we are with Frazier Brooks, who is speaking at GoPro on December third at the MGM Hotel. And you have got to go to hear him speak. There will be a lot of other speakers. I found out I'm actually speaking. So that's no big deal. I'm on a panel. I think they're calling it the dinosaur panel. It'll be awesome. But at the end of the day, it will be. I mean, I know Lisa Grossman speaking on that. She might even be on the same panel. Very psyched up. But I am telling you, I am buying a ticket to listen to Fraser Brooks. This guy is is all of it in a bag of chips. Higdon's going to be there. He's got a speaking slot. Obviously, Eric's going to be doing all kinds of training. So is Marina. All kinds of unbelievable people. So, Frazier, now tell that story about how excited you are on and about going to GoPro. Yeah, I'm super, super pumped. So when I got started in network marketing, it was 2010. This is me as an actual distributor. I looked around there and I thought, right, if I want to be the best of the best, what event do I have to attend? So, for example, if I'm playing soccer, we call it football over here, but if I'm playing soccer, I need to be at the World Cup. I need to play at the World Cup. If I'm in Super Bowl, uh, sorry, if I'm in uh, American football, I need to be at the Super Bowl. I need to be at the best event. So what is the best event? So I was looking around and 2010 went by, 2011, 2012 hit. And I saw all these people in a room and it was it was GoPro. I think there was about two and a half thousand people at the time. It's obviously grown since then. There's a crazy amount of people now. And I always thought, I'm going to be on GoPro. I'm going to be on GoPro. Go and be on, going to be on GoPro. I thought, my story's real good. My background's really good. I know I'll crush it. Um, but I've got to, you know, I've got, I've got to show the world. So I kept going to work and I hit different milestones. And then I got to see some of the stories of some of the speakers. And I remember thinking, you know what? I'm never going to make this. Like everyone just keep, everyone's excelling. It's not just me, it's the industry. The industry's on fire. So anyway, I kept trying and thought one day it'll happen, one day it'll happen. Then the decision that I, this one of the, like the decision I made to leave the industry as a, as a distributor, there was two, well, there was three reasons that I really struggled with. Number one was leaving my team who, who, who I was responsible for. Number two was having the residual income. But number three was saying, you know what? I've admitted defeat. I'm not a quitter, but this was something I was quitting on. I'm quitting on the fact that I'll never be on the stage because Eric doesn't usually have generic uh, network marketing trainers on there. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, he's never had a generic, some, he's never had a generic speaker from outside of the US before. And he's definitely not had someone who's 30 who's a generic trainer. So I'm thinking this is never going to happen. 
So I just thought, nope, I'm going to do what my parents done to me. I'm going to make my actions speak louder than any words possible. So I'm just going to hustle and hustle. I'm going to be so loud that people cannot not pay attention to me. And that's what I did. I did it with integrity, I believe. I did it the right way. I gave value after value after value. I gave way more than I ever expected to gain. Because if you give more than you ever expect to gain, you will gain more than you ever expected. So I did that. And I get the call from Eric Warwick, first to invite me over to his home to do a social media summit. Did that, feel like I did quite a good job, beat him at golf. We won't go into that, or we could. Um, and then he, he contacted me soon after that and said, hey, I want you to speak on the social media panel. Then soon after that, he said, I'd love to, for you to speak on the social media panel and to do a 30-minute keynote spot as well. And I actually remember going into the bathroom that, that night and Eric doesn't know this, but I was just sat on the toilet um, and I wasn't, don't worry, I wasn't doing doing what I do, but I was sat on the toilet and just because the bathroom is for me is is my kind of confession zone. Um, and I, I feel it now. I just burst into tears, tears of, I can feel it. I, I was just tears of gratitude and overwhelm. And you know what? No matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you wear, I'm looking at my socks right now, wearing crazy red socks. It doesn't matter you know, it doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, what your beliefs are. You can literally do and become and achieve anything you want if you make the decision to be a giver more than a getter. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I'm so grateful for the opportunities and I'm so grateful for the people who have come into my life. And I'm so grateful for every single thing that gets thrown at me that I can deal with both on a positive note, on a negative note. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm proud of the people who have helped me get to where I've, where I've got to. So. Um, I'm excited to be there because my passion is going to come out. Um, the blood in my veins that is network marketing is going to be shown, and I'm just excited to meet everyone there who, who's 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 willing to it, who, who's willing to meet me. Now, I'm exactly the opposite. I knew that Eric Worre was going <laughs> to discover me, and so I just lived for the day that the letter came. And finally, the letter came, and I'll never forget it. I opened it up, and it was from Eric Worre, and I and to read it to Denise and I opened it up and it said dear uh, dear whatever I don't even know what it was I'm so pissed off about it and then it said we would love to have Denise speak at this year's GoPro <laughs> it wasn't me it was Denise and Denise spoke there before I did and I was so jealous of her I had to up my skills and I finally got up there and I upped my skills and that the rest is history we've both spoken there several times since then but yeah I'll never forget I got that letter and I was all pumped up and just like you and it wasn't for me so I had to wait another couple of years and actually learn something and it was horrible but it was horrible. So we <laughs> guess what we're going to do? We're going to take another break right now, and we're coming back right after this on the Tom Chenault Show. And we are back. So um, you're, when are you coming? To, when are, so when are you going to Vegas? Are you, are you going, like, right away, or i got to check the comments? Okay, so now I can talk to all you people. If you want to look at the comments and say all kinds of random stuff to your friends, you can do that too, Frazier. Uh, we're just goofing around now for about three minutes till we get back on the air. So when are you going into Vegas? Are you going to stay a week or what are you doing? I fly in on the 3rd and then on the 7th I leave to Calgary. So I'm going to be doing a, a generic event over in Calgary in the all, all wonderful weather I hear over in Calgary. Oh. So, uh, yeah, I hear it's joyful. Um, so, yeah, just a quick quick fly in. What about you? We're going to go. We'll probably stay for December and January. <laughs> no, I don't know. We'll just be there for a while. <laughs> I can't afford to stay very long. I don't make all the money that you guys do as generic speakers. You know that, you know, I've got one advertiser on this show and that's me. I mean, you know, I don't, we don't charge any money, you know, and Adrian gets, Adrian would get it. So I am like getting food from the Kurds here. So I'll be flying in for like an hour. So it'll be horrible. Actually, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, In and Out Burger I'll buy in Vegas. You, I'll buy you one of those. You'll buy me something. I'll buy you one of those buffet lunches or breakfast. Don't you love those? Yeah. And Stephen, we got people listening. Colleen Walters, I just saw her. She is there. She's from Australia. Uh, Louise Adrian from Canada. Uh, Duke Rumley from Longmont, Colorado. I mean, we've got people coming in on this show from everywhere. I'm telling all you guys, and I keep saying this through the show, and I'll get back on. Uh, go to GoPro. That I really am. I'm, I'm adamant about that. I think you know, and lots of people say, well, you don't want to go there and send your people there. That's just a bunch of bull. 
I mean, it is ridiculous. Uh, if your people are going to leave you, they're going to leave you. So if you're all worried about your people, not, uh, you know, number one, if you're in the room with your people, for all the people, then you're out. You're not out in the halls getting recruited by all the hall rats that sit out there in the halls and just try to pick people off and play like they're not. But that happens everywhere you go. The, Eric is absolutely the most diligent. I've watched him kick people out of the bath. You know, they, they their numbers and their cards on the stalls in the bathrooms, and Eric just calls them up to the stage, and they come up and say, "Oh man, I'm famous," and they go, "No, you're not. You're kicked out of here." That's how adamant they are about cross-recruiting at these things. And every time, every day I'm here, and, well, we do all this training at our company. I don't believe that. I don't believe it. I think I, there's so much to be learned from a Higdon, from a Fraser Brooks, from so many of the speakers out there that there is no doubt in my mind that everybody's going to get something from that. And these generic speakers, and I love the term generic speakers, because I believe that these guys are truly generic and they're not out there to move my people to another organization. They're there to literally train them to do things that I can't train them to do. I don't think I can train people to do what Fraser Brooks does. I don't think I can do it. And I don't think I want to learn how to do it at age 67. It's, he's 30. He's 37 years younger than me. 37 years younger. You think I'm going to figure out what this little punk knows? He's up all night working. It's unbelievable, don't you say? Am I right or am I wrong? Well, no, mate. You, I, if you take the word generic, it's actually Jen Eric. So it, it's Eric. It's Eric's fault, right? He's he's created oh, this, yeah. this this generation of uh, yeah. He's created this is this generation of of generic trainers which is again part of his life's work to 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 raise professionalism and network marketing and i believe we're all we're, we're all now generic trainers what we're doing right now is is a generic training what we'll what we'll do in 10 years will be a generic training for those of you for those people who say oh i don't want anyone influencing my team because it's going to disrupt everything it will disrupt your organization in an in incredibly positive way um, so get people into the room. It's like network marketing's Christmas day. You've got to be in the room. Otherwise you're going to miss out big time. Yeah. And again, Marianne's got some tickets. She put a link up earlier. And, uh, if you want to buy a ticket that mm -hmm. I think we're out early actually, so we're probably out of them. So she's going to have to call and tell you that you have to pay 547 instead of 370. So you snooze, you snooze, you lose. We are coming back right now in a couple of seconds. So just be quiet for a second, Frazier, and we're going to come back right after this to the real radio show uh, for the next segment. And hopefully Adrian will be here for the next commercial so you don't have to listen to me dribble on. Here we go. And we're back. It is Tom Chenault, and it's the Tom Chenault Show. We've got Frazier Brooks with us. Marianne's going to tell me who we've got next week in a second. But I am going to tell you one thing right now. We have got the king. I love this guy. I think he's that good. I think that he teaches things that I can't teach. So we've got like 25 minutes left, Frazier. Somebody, getting brand, somebody starting brand new. Basically what you're trying to do, and a guy named David Peters ask a question again, what did you do when you first got started? And what you're going to, what you train people to do is not to do what you did when you first got started, but do what you're doing now that is effective and working in 2018, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, yeah. So what do they do? So, yes, yeah, so what I do today is what I did when I started in 2010. And I've got a very, very simple kind of five-step strategy, really, that, that I follow. It's my daily method of operation. Um, it's my kind of you clock into work, you do the five things, and you clock out of work. So the first thing I do is I aim to create content, whether that's on my personal profile, whether it's in a Facebook group, whether it's in a messenger. I go ahead and I create some sort of content, whether it's a – a posting a quote, whether it's posting a photo of me with a bit of a slide or a, or a recorded video, I create content. After I've done that, I will then spend some time actively commenting on social media. So I call it the toilet technique. I'm going to share this at GoPro, but it's this. when I go into the toilet a number of times a number of times a day, and I'll sit on the toilet and I will have my phone in my hand. I will multitask and I will go in and I will actively go and give love encouragement 
value into the comments, whether it's on pages, on lives, on groups, in the messenger, on newsfeed, in replies. I will go and love because the more love you give, the more love you get back. The reason why we love our parents is because they loved us first before we got, you know, before we loved them, right? So you've got to give a lot of love to get a lot of love. And that's what social media is all about. Um, after that, I will then go and connect with new people. Now, Tom, you're the master. You are the absolute master at, at connecting and keeping on, to, keeping on top of all your connections that you've got. I don't know anyone else who comes close to you at that, which is the master, master, the master of all skills in network marketing and life, in my opinion. The best way to learn life is to travel and meet new people. Those are the two things I aim to do as much as I can, as often as I can. So I'm going to look to connect with new people. The, that's the third thing. The fourth thing is I want to communicate with the people I've already connected with. So I've produced content, I've commented, I've connected with new people, I'm communicating with existing people. The last thing I'm going to do is close. Now, you can only close something that's open. You can't close a closed door. You can't close a closed can of Coke. You can only open, you can only close something that's once open. So a door, if it's open, you can close it. So the goal is when you're closing is to find out if someone's open first, then introduce them to something, then look to close them. And those are the five things that I've done, whether I'm in the industry or out of the industry. I do it every single day, whether it's a Sunday or not. I do it every single hour that I'm awake. Yes, I'm a hard worker. I'm not duplicatable. What I do is not duplicatable because no one will outwork me because no one will out outperform me no one will outlast me and guess what no one will be able to out earn me that's that's the thing you've got to do guys you've got to outwork your competitor you've got to outwork your team you've got to outperform anyone else and you've got to outlast everyone else that's why the top income earners are where they're at they've just been doing it longer better um you know and yeah they just work hard so those are the five things in a super super short short um space of time uh, that i do every single day okay david you heard that so me you know, if you guys go to contactmapping.com, and I'm going to have to do a commercial for it during the uh, next one just because Adrian will kick me out of my own will if I don't. So contactmapping.com, but inside of that is that coffee shop interview that really made my career. But what he just said, I literally document seven days a week of two interviews a day and one three-way connection with my upline or another person. Every day of my life, seven days a week, 365 a year, I do exactly what Frazier just said because I have to. But it isn't like it's a job. It isn't like it is discipline. At this stage of the game, at age 67, I've been doing it for so long, it's just a habit. And I love that habit. It's the best habit. So what I do every day is exactly what he does. I've got, he's got his five. I'm not that smart. I've got two. But I'm telling you what, he's more successful than me. I won't be able to, you know, what he's going to accomplish by the time he's 67 will be unbelievable. And I don't see him quit. And I feel like he's going to do what I did. And if you go to one of Eric's big events where you do the training after the training or whatever, it be on leadership or leadership mastery. I can't remember. It's beyond leadership. I went there to retire. And Eric Worre said, you're not going anywhere. This industry needs you. You need to retire into your business. So stop doing what you don't want to do. Play like you're retired and stay working or you're going to die. And he was 100% right. So I peeled off 55 pounds. And now I look healthy. And now I am healthy. And now I feel like I can live to be 100 doing this business till they carry me out the door. Just like Fraser D. More years. <laughs> You'll be in 70 years, buddy. <laughs> That's a long time. Well, mate, if, if we can transform 100 million people, then I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And that's got that's the kind of goal that you have to have where you want to transform that many lives. He's got the plan built to do it, and he's living his life into that plan. And that's critically important for these people listening. Master plan built for yourself. You train people to have a master plan built for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, my, 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 my master plan for other people really is to make sure, first of all, and people have heard this before, make sure you set goals that you, you believe one day you'll reach, but it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of time to do it. 
I'm not I'm not a believer in the whole kind of like, oh, I've just done something. I'm going to write it down on my list and tick it off just to say that I've done it. No, get really, really scared. I'm I'm scared about training and traveling the world every single weekend until I'm 80 years old. I'm scared because I know my kids, my kids eventually, I've not got kids now, but my future kids are going to hate me for it, right? But it doesn't matter because that's my long-term goal. That's the commitment that I'm making for the greater good. That's the commitment that I'm making to other people's lives because I am paying it forward because I know for a fact that almost no one has had the the, the upbringing that I've been able to have. I, I put my hand up and say, hey, I was a spoiled brat. But guess what? It wasn't my choice to be the spoiled brat. That was my parents' choice. But I'm almost sure that if you ask the majority of parents if they could spoil their kids rotten, then they would. So, yeah, my, my master plan for everyone else is work hard, get scared by your long-term future, and just commit to it. Because, you know, you've got to die, die, with, die knowing that you've either completed your mission or you were really close to completing the mission because it will live on long, long, long after you're gone. And what about getting married? Did you say fiance? You're going to get married? You're actually going to jump Beyonce. off the clip and get married? Is she a network marketer? She's not. So interesting story, though. She was my uh, translator slash interpreter. In 2013, I did an event in Russia, uh, and she was my interpreter in Moscow, and we've been together ever since. Do you know the parallel of that story with Eric's? That's how he met Marina. Same deal, exactly. Yeah. You, yeah. Same thing. Same thing with John it, Milton Fogg. It's crazy. You Fogg did the same thing. You guys are also. I got to get rid of Denise. <laughs> I got to go. How, where? I got to get one of those. I'm telling you. So did uh, Jeff Mack. Do you know Jeff Mack? He's got the most beautiful wife from <laughs> Russia too. That's so exciting. All right. Okay, and we and, and mate, I've seen Denise, mate. I've. What I've seen, Denise, man, you are a lucky guy. <laughs> well, I don't know about that now that I'm hearing about all these Russian women. Okay, so actually, we all know that that is a very, very feeble and not funny attempt at humor. And I take it all back, and I love it, especially since it just dawned on me that we do have a studio audience today here in the training center in Longmont, Colorado. <laughs> And it happens to consist of Denise's mother. So I'm in more trouble than I ever wanted to be. I don't even like Russian women. So that is so sad. I'm divorced. I can't believe I did that. But, yes, she's a great wife. And I would never. Yes. So what else was I going to? Maybe she's going to find a Russian man. Um, let me think of what else I was going to tell you. Okay. So the Ninja Networker. I am telling you, you've got to go there, you guys. You got to, every one of you, go there. You can participate in this thing for no dough. You can get involved with him. You can see what he's doing. He is a complete and total maniac. I love him to death. And there is no question in my mind that he can train you to do what I can't train you to do. And social media, I mean, it's here to isn't, I mean, there's no question about it, Frazier. It's ramping up. And if these people don't have skills in social media, they're going to miss the boat. So they need network marketing skills, social media skills, and you're the guy to teach them both and have them, how they, have them come together, right? That, that's right, man. Yeah, that's right. I think in today's world, if you look at the marriage statistics, more and more people are, are getting married after meeting online, whether it's a dating site or a dating app. So you know, social media is is the dating is the dating site for network marketers. So we we've, we've got to use it well. We've got to use it effectively. We've uh, we don't want to be offensive. And we've again we've got to we've got to go out there and look for the people who are open. Look for the people who are prepared to go on a date with us. And then guess what, guys? You go on a date with them. You meet them in a coffee shop. You meet them on Zoom. You know, you contact map them. Get it done. Go through the core skills. Network marketing. Social media is not the process. It's just part of the process. So I'm happy to teach you the social media stuff. Then I want you to go back and listen to Tom because he knows what he's doing with the core skills. I've got a thing or two to learn from Tom. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm super excited to go to GoPro now because I didn't know you were speaking. And I'm really excited now. I'm really excited. I'm going to take my shiny pen. <laughs> my shiny pen. Well, you, would have, you won't need much shiny ink. Uh, I've had a lot of fun there. And all I've basically done is laugh my ass off and have nothing but fun with people and have fun with Eric. And down in Australia, he brought me up on the stage and we had a we had an unbelievably fun time. And when you get Eric Worre unplugged, there's nothing like him because he is such a cute boy. 
you know, he's a little bit introverted, so he's, he's usually thinking a lot. And when you get that kid going, you're going to have the time of your life. You're going to meet people. It's going to be an experience for you like you've never seen before. I mean, it's going to blow your mind, Frazier. And the world is going to win listening to the Ninja Networker. So that's going to be unbelievable. So I'm going to take a quick break here in a couple of seconds. And uh, I do want to give a shout out to Genesis Communications Network. They've got 550 or some crazy amount of stations. They're all over the world. So George Norrie's on there. So is Alex Jones. So is Mary Lou Henner. So is Joanne Conaway. So is Doug Firebaugh, the, the unbelievable network marketer. All those people are on that network, and it's real radio, and I just can't thank Ted Anderson enough for letting me be on this show for so many years at the level that he's got me, because I'm just the luckiest guy in the world, and I'll never take that for granted. So please, listen to the commercials, buy something, and uh, enjoy Genesis Communications Network. We're coming back right after this for the final segment with the one and only... uh, (laughs) <laughs> Frazier Brooks. I was going to try to say your website. I couldn't remember it. All right. We are back. And contactmapping.com. Everybody, you got to go there. Adrian didn't make it in. It is an unbelievable app that is going to change your life. It's going to humanize your address book. I know people's blood types. I interview everybody. I find out what they love about their life, what they don't love about their life. I find out what their goals are. I find out the name of their kids. I find out the name of everything. And I take their picture because the contact mapping app says it has a camera and you take a picture of the guy. And then the, then it asks you, uh, the contact mapping app asks you, what else do you know about Frazier? And you speak it right into the phone and it goes right into the notes. So no longer is it on a yellow sticky. No longer is it in an Excel spreadsheet. No longer is, is it in that supposedly great memory of yours. Because your great memory is not that great. And nothing's worse than having somebody misspell a name. Um, Adrian's right now with a guy named Andy Brandt. He's got a, a girl. Uh, a, he, the guy's got a daughter named Macy. And everybody calls her, spells her name wrong, says her name wrong, the whole shot. And nothing bugs you more than having your name pronounced or spelled wrong because it's your name. And if people can't remember that about you, and that's what's so great about contact mapping is you've got all that right there. So then you need the information later and you just Google it. So today, I'm, I, I'm getting rid of my Tesla next week. It, 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 the lease is out. So now I'm, I'm trying to round up people. So I'm asking all my hotshot friends what kind of cars they're driving. And then I'm going to go find the connection to find me the car at a great price that I can do it because I contact map literally everybody. So tonight when I go to bed, I met Frazier Brooks. I talked to him on the phone. I put his name and phone number in my phone. That was it. So guess what? Tonight I go to bed. My phone's going to say, do you really want to go to bed without mapping Frazier Brooks? And it's going to remind me to put him in before I go to sleep. So I've got that data. And then it's going to say, when are you going to follow Frazier up? And never isn't an answer. So you're not allowed to put that. You're not allowed to say never. So it's got to be one day, one week, one month, one year, or a custom date. But follow up, I promise all of you, is your weakest link. You don't know how to do it. And I am telling you, when I came into this game, I thought I was a 10 on a scale of 10. As a follow-up guy, I was about a 5. After using this app, one and a half. I mean, it is crazy. I'll show you my phone real quick if I can turn the doggone thing on. Oh, geez, all these pictures I took of myself. Okay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> yes, I'm a mess. So here's the contact mapping app, and this is completely impromptu. So some names are going to pop up, but it's right there. And so I hit that. There it comes up. And then right across the top line is all the people I have to follow up. There is Sandy Greenberg. There's a publicist named Lucas High. There's a guy named Joe from AA. There's a good friend of mine who's a pilot named Colin. Claire's one of my big leaders. Jack and Tammy run a, a uh, nonprofit down in the Philippines. I just want to throw them a phone hug. Greg Ryder is a good friend of mine from Southern California. That's what happens here. All those people. And those people are people you would have never thought of and you're going to think about in a year. And when you get to my age, you're going to think about them and you're going to say, and you're going to call somebody on the phone and say, what happened to that guy? And they're going to say he died because that's what's happening to us at our 67th year. And I'm going, oh, what I called him. 
Only if only I would have known. But everybody's out of mind out of mind until you're using this follow up component. And there's three choices there. When you hit somebody, I'm gonna hit Greg Ryder right now. Call, message, or email. So all you do is hit message. Greg Ryder is gonna freak when he sees this. So I'm just gonna send that to him right now. I love you, Greg. I'm just hitting it. I love you, Greg. <laughs> He's gonna love you, Greg. Hang on, I'm just gonna do this for you. So he doesn't think it's a form text. He's gonna go, geez, what's going on with Tom? Is he drinking again? And so then that goes there. That's all right. So then I'm gonna hit edit follow up. And I missed the button because Marianne just told me I have to come back. Edit follow up. And I hit one month. And in a month, I'll hit him with another phone hug. So that's that simple. So we're back. It's the Tom Chenault Show. And I missed the break by 30 minutes. So that's too bad. Sorry about that, Frazier. We've got Frazier Horn with us. Uh, Frazier Brooks with us. Frazier Horn is my friend from Vail. <laughs> I have my contact mapping app. I am terrible. If I don't have an app in front of me, I can't even remember my own name. I am so sorry about that. So all of you need to go. <laughs> no to contactmapping.com because you won't be doing that because nothing bothers Fraser Brooks more than being called Fraser Horn. Nothing bothers Fraser Brooks more than being called Brooks like a stream instead of Brooks like a long name with an E in it. That's why it's so beautiful. That's why you have to have the contact mapping app. We're back to the one and only Fraser Brooks, who I love with all my heart. It's about six minutes long. We've got to convince these people that number one, they've got to go to GoPro to hear you speak, but between there to enroll in your program and get it done. I am enrolled in his program. I wrote the check. I don't even think you knew I did it. And I've got all your materials here. I've participated in your stuff and it's made me better because I've got to master this social media. I am tired of these whippersnappers kicking my you know what. So thank you, Frazier, for being you. And I'm telling you what, everybody should do it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah for sure mate and I, what, what we decided to do was instead of just going right um come come along and although you don't know us just buy our stuff we want we want to kind of show people that we want to give them value we want them to go away with what i like to call bingo moments where they're they're watching a webinar they're watching a facebook live and they go bingo that's what i need to do uh if they want to then up level from there then they can buy the course if they don't then hey they can go ahead and and, and do what they've what they've learned so if people go to the ninja networker.com they can happily they can you know happily just um you know join one of the webinars that we run for free uh they usually last about an hour we do a q a session at the end of them um and if they want to buy the course they can buy the course but hey we we love them if they do buy we love them if they don't buy um as long as someone's prepared to up, up their skills then for me it's, it's raising the professionalism of the industry, which is, is the overall goal. So yeah, they can go ahead and check that out. Okay, everybody get this part. You wanna be better at what you do. The only way you're gonna get better at what you do is to continue learning every day. And I don't care what that is, whether it's learning online, whether it's reading books, whether it's watching these webinars, whatever it is, I am begging you, I am literally begging you to learn something new every day, to stay a student of this profession. You know, you talk to these people that are making major bank, um, in lots of money, a sick amount of money. You got to know that mm -hmm. if they can do it, you can do it. And especially looking at me, because I'm a dead drunk alcoholic laying in the street, didn't have a dollar to my name when I got in this profession. And I got in this profession because it was the last house on the block. By that, I mean no credit check, no background check, no nothing. Unlimited income. It was the only place for me to go. And I had to be successful. I had that gift of desperation. And I learned the skills. That's what Frazier teaches. Right, Frazier? That's it, mate. That's it. That's, that's, that's all we do. My belief, my belief is if you increase your skill level and you increase your activity level, you'll get the results. Don't focus on the results. Focus on you doing more and you becoming more and you'll get more. It's as simple as that, really, Tom. Uh, there's not much more you know, to it. Um, people quit. People lose faith. People lose belief. Why? Because they're not prepared to up their skill level and they're not prepared to do the work. The people who are are the people who are crushing it. The people who are 
And the people who are, are traveling the world. The people who are, I've got more friends than you can even dream of who they can call on and rely on anything. The people who are, are going to GoPro. The people who are, are spending the time on the webinars. The people who are, are listening to these shows. The people who are, are incredible people. Um, you've got you've got that chance to be able to be one of those people by doing more, learning more, and you'll get more. Simple. And that, yeah, and that's it. And how much time do you spend learning, Frazier? I mean, huh. uh, every day. All day, every day. I learn, I learn by doing. I learn by doing, man. I I'm more of a I'm more of a watcher than a reader. I would say. Um, I'm, I'm a very visual guy. My reading skills are not incredible. Uh, if you tell me to read something out loud, I'm not so great. It's as, as weird as it is. Um, but I'll watch, I'll watch, I'll, I'll consciously be watching about an hour a day. Um, but I'll have three or four or five hours of video on in the background whilst I'm doing other stuff. Um, so it's, it's, it's going in there because I believe I've learned more of my stuff like subconsciously than consciously just being around my parents for, you know, um, 15, 16, 17 years whilst they've been on the phones, I've been in the same room. Um, so yeah, I'm very fortunate like that. Well, thank you for coming on, man. You have been unbelievable. Next week we've got Ray Higdon, which is a, not another, you know, here you've got Frazier, then you've got Ray Higdon. I mean, and Marianne's been calling Eric like a madman, and not, he's not picking up the phone because he knows that uh, we're trying to get him on this show, and we know how to do it. All we have to do is text or call Mar uh, Marina, and he'll come on in five minutes. But Eric is the busiest man on the planet. But I will tell you, you three are the, my go-to guy. And I love a lot of people, but I really love you three. So thank you for being you. Thank you for coming on. We'll see you next time, Frazier Brooks, and you have an unbelievable day. Thank you, mate. Appreciate you. All right. See you later. Goodbye, everybody. All right. That'll do it. Frazier, thank you so much, man. You are a rock star. No, no I appreciate it. you, mate. And, yeah, I'll, I'll be in touch soon with contact mapping. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll be fine. You and Adrian can figure that out. But what I want to do, and, you know, I can, and I say this all the time on this show, it doesn't make any difference to me whether people use contact mapping or not. It really doesn't. I mean, it is a tool that changed my life. And if they can't figure that out, that's fine. Just have a system where you're remembering people. Whatever system you've got, if you've got a better system than contact mapping, I don't believe you. And I don't believe you're better at it than I am. But if it's working better for you than what I'm doing, go do that. If you've got the Dewey Decimal System, if you've got it all written on these little, you know, look at all the, go, go look in your drawer right now. And look at all the business cards that you've got sitting in your desk. Well, you don't have any idea who they are, what they look like, anything. And then you call me on the phone and say, Tom, show me your database. And let me show you the picture of the human being that I took of that guy when I was with him. Because my mind works that way. I can remember that I met him at the haagen store or over at Pizza Hut or wherever it works, by the way. It's haagen over to Baskin-Robbins. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's how I do it because I my brain has to work so many different ways for me to actually remember somebody and put it into context. And you're the same way. And I promise you, you don't have that kind of recognition, that brain recognition of a business card. So however you're doing it, good on you. But if you want to be the best there is at it, that's how you. That's why I do it. And so. It's that simple. And if you don't have the 10 bucks a month, well, call me and I'll give you the 10 bucks a month. We aren't in it. We're, do, we're here to do it because we are trying to change the world like you are to Frazier. Right? Yeah, no, and I, I would say, Tom, it, yeah, for sure. I, one of the biggest questions I deal with on a daily basis from the generic point of view is how do I keep on top of all the conversations I'm having? And the conversation is becoming more relevant and more apt now because if you look at it, more people are having more conversations with more people because of social media. It's so easy to connect to people really, really quickly. Um, and you know what the answer is most of the time is a piece of paper and a pen or yeah. use a spreadsheet or get a sticky note system. So I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to contact Adrian because I want to introduce him to, to, to my audience because I know they're going to love every single thing he says. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing that. Okay, I want well, to, I want to, and I what, need to. What time is it? 
not no. 11 p.m. I asked I asked I asked Marianne what time it was yeah. and she told me no it's 11 o'clock you go to bed I know that you're tired I love you Frazier you have an unbelievable day and we'll see you next time yeah hook-